grown up terms, but you can call it a fish finder because most people will not buy a pedometer even though that's what the machine is. They're like, I don't want a pedometer, I want a fish finder. What? Let's go over a run real quick thing. Why do they call the fish finder a pedometer? Or why do they call the pedometer a fish finder? Well, the ocean is metered in fathoms. And I go on a different boat every day when I'm doing my guide service thing. And I know most people, the first thing they do when they get their fish finding apparatus is they change it from fathoms to feet because they don't know how to do simple math. I came from the sport boat industry into the yacht industry and I had to convert fathoms into feet because that's what everybody was running on their yachts because nobody knew their six, they didn't follow their timetables. When they were a kid, they don't know their sixes. So I had to go in there and start to figure it out again with my eighth grade education. But I'm here to tell you, the ocean's metered in fathoms and places like the 209, the 181, the 267, the 277, the 289, those are all how deep it is there. Those are all high spots in the ocean that are metered in fathoms. So the nine, that's nine fathoms. The, the uh, 209 is 209 fathoms. So the depth of the ocean is metered in fathoms and that's why the machine is called a fatometer because it's a fathom meter fatometer fatometer and then set the clock ahead to 2020 now they're not even called what they're supposed to be called now they're called a fish finder some people call them a sounder and then there's people that even call them a sonar listen gang if you didn't spend at least thirty thousand dollars on your machine it is not a sonar i know the guy that sold it to you told you it was a sonar sonar is on a ram comes out through the bottom of the boat and that basically for lack of a better word the transducer we call it a camera scans back and forth in front of the boat from side to side all the way around 360 degrees that is a sonar some of you have a side scanning fatometer that is not a sonar the side scanning fatometer it's a gimmick it's not really going to work in the application that we need it to work out here on the ocean it'll work on a lake because there's not a lot of movement you're not driving around at 8 10 12 15 knots looking for stuff the side scanner is really, it's not going to have time to react to bounce off a fish on the side of the boat, bounce back in time for you to see it. It just doesn't work that way. So the side scanning sonar, it's a pedometer, but it's not a real sonar. A sonar starts at 30 grand and goes up from there. I'm just trying to help. I know, I know there's some people on here that sell the stuff and you guys are great and I love y'all, but I'm just trying to be honest to all your clients that uh, with the four or five different um, transducers, if you will, pointing in different directions, that's all great if you're on the anchor and you wanna see the fish swimming around, but if you're on the anchor, you're already gonna catch them anyway, so you're not really worried about seeing them swim by the sides of the boat. But a sonar is going to look off around the boat at 360 degrees while you travel. It's constantly looking so you don't miss any fish. And then the new Omnis are constant screen. The whole thing's just pulsing out, showing you all the fish all the way around. But basically what all of us have on our boats is a fatometer. It has a transducer on the bottom of the boat that goes to the bottom and bounces back up and leaves marks on the screen. What I see most of you doing, that's the biggest problem I see you doing, is you run your machine range on automatic. And if you're running your machine's range on automatic, you're missing everything out there. There's no way that that machine's gonna find you anything because of the fact that most of the time you're fishing out here offshore, 
you're fishing in somewhere between two and three thousand feet of water and that machine is looking for the bottom if it's on auto instead of looking at the water where you want to fish in which on most of us on our private boats are going to be somewhere between zero and 150 feet but if the screen says zero on the top and three thousand on the bottom and you run over a giant school of giant bluefin, they're gonna look like that hair I just pulled. You're not even gonna be able to see it. But if you set the screen at zero to 150 and you run over them and they're in 100 feet of water, they're gonna look like my hand on your screen. It's gonna be a giant upside down, or a giant boomerang upside down you. Because of the fact that you stretch the screen out and you're looking at zero to 150, instead of scratching the screen out and looking at zero to three thousand common sense will tell you that doesn't work but most of you are afraid to touch the settings on your machine because when you got it put on there the guy that put it in he said there's the bottom and he went home and he didn't really know how to show you how to use it because he doesn't fish every day for a living and that's why it's super important to be a member of somebody's website that teaches you how to use all the stuff that you have on your boat who has that website that teaches you about everything every single aspect of fishing in Southern California whose website does that that covers everything from your fatometer to flying the kite to catching a halibut to catching a calico bass to anchoring your boat to driving your boat to maneuvering your boat to docking your boat your saltwater guide covers all that. There's no reason to guess anymore. There's no reason to try to figure it out, gang. You can simply spend $4.99, go over to yoursaltwaterguide.com, be a member, learn how to use everything that you have on your boat. There are websites that cover how to catch a bluefin. That's great, that's fine and dandy. Whenever we have an extra $1,000 in our pocket, we'll go bluefin fishing. A lot of us don't have an extra thousand, but we have an extra couple hundred that we can go bass fishing or we can go catch a rockfish or we can go troll for Bonita along the coast or we can go off a couple miles and catch a Dorado under a kelp patty. But we want to know how to use every aspect of our boat in Southern California because we have to make our boat payment year round. We have to pay our insurance year round. We have to pay for storage or our dockage fee year round. So why don't we learn how to fish year round? That's where your saltwater guide comes into play, gang. And we're gonna cover every aspect of fishing